sheet on the welcome desk. It starts at 6, and you can see Mirror Crystal for details. So, ladies, the sign-up sheet for the, uh, the Mother's Day luncheon that will happen on Saturday, May the 11th, this is the last day to sign up for it. The only thing you have to be is a female, because we all have moms, right? So, sign up, and then we'll discuss the, the, the menu after that, but after tonight, the sign-up sheet is going away, so please sign up if you can. Hi, I have a podcast. It's on Spotify. It's called The Road to Salvation. It's testimonies and Bible studies. If you guys could, please give us a listen. Thank you. All right, ladies, again, um, May 1st is the next women's Bible study. It's held here. It's at uh, Food is served at 6 o'clock, and then we start the Bible study at 6.30, and we uh, have the Bible study back there. Good evening, everybody. To follow up what Julia just said, for the men, we are having men's Bible study uh, first Wednesday of the month, which is May 1st at 6 o'clock if you'd like to eat with us. Uh, then Bible study starts at 6.30 if you just want to come for the Bible study. Uh, we are going over the series The Kingdom Man from Tony Evans. It's a great, it's a great series, so we'd love to see you guys out. Thank you. So I'll stand, please. Turn and wave at a couple of folks. Make sure they've been greeted properly. Wave up at the camera, those that are watching online. Something interesting today. When I went home, my neighbor was asking about Emily. And I was a little confused how he knew. He said he watched it online. So our neighbor has been watching our services online. Praise the Lord. Amen. So... All right, let's pray and invite the Lord into this service as well, okay? Father, again, we're so thankful to be in your house for a second time today. God, we're looking forward to more time in your presence and more of your word, Lord. Father, again, we're asking for your sweet spirit to just flow through this place. God, to be very real to everyone in the room. And God, we give you praise for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Victory in Jesus. How many of you have the victory tonight? Amen. I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his glory Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. 
Dios les bendiga. God bless you all. We're going to sing a song for God. Amen. Aleluya. Gloria a Dios. Ayúdame con sus palmas, hermanos. Gloria a Cristo. Aleluya. cayendo aquí es tan fuerte sobre mí mis manos levantaré y su gloria tocaré algo está cayendo aquí es tan fuerte sobre mí Mis manos levantaré Y su gloria tocaré Está cayendo Su gloria sobre mí Sanando Su gloria está aquí Está cayendo Tu gloria sobre mí Sanando heridas Levantando el caído Su gloria está aquí Hallelujah. How many believe his glory is here in this place? Gloria a Dios, aleluya. Algo está cayendo aquí. Es tan fuerte sobre mí. Mis manos levantaré y tu gloria tocaré. Algo está cayendo aquí, es tan fuerte sobre mí. Mis manos levantaré y su gloria tocaré. Está cayendo Tu gloria sobre mí Sanando heridas Levantando al caído Tu gloria está aquí Está cayendo Gloria está aquí. Amén. favorite place to be is in the spirit in the spirit of God 
doesn't get any better than that. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what your favorite experience is. There's nothing like being in the Spirit of God, in the presence of God, feeling His love and His compassion. Just nothing like it. But that's not what I'm here for. Some of you know why I'm here. So get ready. Because it's time to receive our tithes and offerings. You know, after all he's done for us, we can do more than that for him. This is our chance to show him how, how much we appreciate all that he's done. Let's praise Him as we receive our tithes and offerings. Lord, I ask you to bless us, tithes and offering. Bless those who can't give and who can, Lord. Thank you for all the many blessings that you've done in my life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
could stand. If you have breath tonight, you should be praising the Lord. Amen. Scripture even says that. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. I thank God. How many of you thank God tonight? Amen. You're here, right? You got here, and it's time to give him some praise. Amen. the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I tried with all my might, I just can't win the fight, I'm slowly drifting, a bag of Jesus, you 
release into praise. Amen. Don't ever let the enemy steal your praise because it is a weapon to defeat him and he knows that. Right? So you got a reason to praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. I got a reason to praise. When I'm at my end, you're just getting started. When I hit a wall, you just walk through. When I face a mountain, you are the maker. So it's God When I'm out of faith, you are still faithful. When I'm at my worst, you are still good. And all of my questions, you are the answer. It all points to you. You're the God of the breakthrough When I'm breaking down Oh, you'll be working a way through When there's no way out This one thing I know You're still on your throne So whatever I'm feeling I still got a reason to praise every day to this world Amen. loud because time is growing shorter yeah. 
We are closer now than we've ever been. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus.
Children's Church, you may be dismissed. Continue to worship as the Word of God comes forward. One more time, amen, with Brother John Carter. Come on, give Jesus praise tonight, amen. Amen. Musicians, stay there. Stay right there. Give me C. Give me C. Well, I was alone and idle. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven said there is work to do. I took my master's hand and I joined that heavenly band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Him that I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I lost my flag in battle. My staff is in my hand. I'm taking it to Jesus over in the glory land. In distant land I trod. Oh, sinner, come to God. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield. For my Lord, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm fighting for the Savior. This battle's almost won. The trumpet will be sounding. The coming of the sun. I'll lay my armor down. said we're on the battlefield I read throughout the Old Testament that anytime they went into battle there were a group of people that went before them that were the worshipers the worshipers led the people into battle I want to know are you a person of worship today do you love Jesus today will you just lift your hands all over this house come on lift your hands all over this house Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your son of a Kotahaya. We bless your name, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. My God, I feel something stirring in the house tonight. Why don't we just take a minute and lose our minds and focus on Him and give Him glory? Stand to your feet. Praise Him, honor Him, glorify Him. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm fighting for my Savior. This battle's almost won. I said the trumpet will be sounding the coming of the sun. Well, we're going to lay this old armor down. We're going to pick up a robe and crown. The songwriter said, we're going to walk the golden streets. I'm telling you right now, when I lay down my armor, 
and I pick up a robe and crown. They, I, I, it's not good grammar, but it's good theology. I ain't walking nowhere. I'm going to run just as fast as I can to the throne room and give God praise. Amen. I'm afraid a lot of people are not on the battlefield. They're on the playground. We're not on a playground. We're on a battle. We're in a battle. Well, thank you, Jesus. I don't know where I'm at or where I'm going, but I'm having a good time while I'm getting there. You just stay right there for just a minute. Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter number 3. I want to say once again how privileged we are. I don't don't step away from my home pulpit on Sundays for just anybody. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I love where God has placed me. I love my people. I miss my people. But when Pastor Wayne invited us to come up without hesitation, I said, absolutely. We would love to come. I love it when some of my people texted me today and said, we missed you today, because that's usually what I tell them. We missed you today. But it is an honor to be here. You've got a full week ahead of you with men and women of God who are going to preach to you the Word of God. They're going to feed your soul. And I'm going to be praying that God continue to move. I'm going to be praying that people are saved, sanctified. I still believe in sanctification. I still believe it's a prerequisite for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I'm believing that people are going to be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. And I'm praying that God just take this revival and just keep going with it. A spirit of there is a spirit of revival in the room. I know your pastoral family have prayed and fasted, and I know you probably have. God's going to do something great. I believe that, and I am honored to be with Pastor Wayne and his family. We had we shared a meal today and, and got to visit fellowship. It was wonderful. Thank you for the hotel accommodation. It was great. It was, it, was one, it was just a time that my family and I, even if it's just for a day, to be able to get away and be together and spend time together. But I've got a word to share with you today. Because once we're filled in His Spirit, then what? What do we do then? In the book of Acts chapter number 3, I'm only going to read together in unison as you're standing a couple verses and then I'm going to get into it. I told the lady who asked me for my scripture, I said I'm going to make it real easy on you tonight. I just put the book of Acts chapter 3 and we'll see how far we can get. It says, Now Peter and John, fresh off the Holy Ghost baptism, They said amen, and they came downstairs from the upper room. Peter and John, here's what I like about it. They left the prayer meeting and went to church. A lot of people, prayer meeting will get you through a day or two. But these people were Jesus freaks. They were Jesus fanatics. They wanted to be in the presence of God. Now Peter and John, now what? Now that they're Holy Ghost filled, went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them 
that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go to church asked of alms and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive expecting to receive I want to know who showed up here tonight expecting to receive Father we thank you for your word It is a lamp unto our feet, not a crystal ball into our future. It is a light unto our path that we must watch every step that we make. And Father, I pray that we will hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. Father, let us be doers of your word and not hearers only. Lord Jesus, we will never fail to thank you and praise you and honor you for it all. And it's in Jesus' name we prayed and the church said, Amen and Amen. You can be seated. We did a walkthrough in Kaywood on Wednesday nights of the book of Acts. We went from, from, from the first chapter to the last chapter and I gave the same introduction every single Wednesday. And I hope that you could walk in Kaywood today and, or meet some of my folks on the street corner and ask them some questions about the overall theme of the book of Acts and that they could tell you. I would hope that they could tell you if they couldn't, we're starting over. Number one, I like to know the who, what, where, when, and why of anything that I read. I'd like to know who wrote it, why they wrote it, why, wh where were they, when, what was the purpose, what was the theme. In, in English language arts, we call that the author's purpose. What was the purpose of the author writing this to the audience? What audience is the author trying to grab a hold of? What, what theme, what overarching purpose is the author writing so the first thing I like to know is who the author is. In the book of Acts, the author is Luke. Luke was a physician. Luke was a doctor. Luke, uh, is he, he, Acts is the second volume of Luke's two-volume work. The first volume that Luke wrote was the book of Luke. So he wrote the book of Luke, and then he wrote the book of Acts. There's a few things about the book of Acts that I really like. See, again, I'm an English language arts person and one of the first assignments that I would give my students on the first day of school every year is I would, on the first day, I would let them st state their name and we would get to know one another and then I would say, okay, now take out a pencil and a piece of paper. We're gonna have a pop quiz. They're like, on the first day of school? But really what it was, it was showing me what they know and where I need to go. I'm a firm believer in giving people the test before I teach the lesson. And I'm going to tell you why I give the test before I teach the lesson. Because if I give the test and they all pass it, there's no need in me teaching the lesson. So sometimes you're going to, you're, you might not go through things because you've already passed the test. But if you're going through a trial or a tribulation or a trouble or a test, it's probably because there are parts of that particular place in your life that you have failed the test. So Jesus is trying to teach you a lesson. Don't get mad at the trial. Don't get mad at the test. Thank God that he loves you enough that he's going to stop and teach you some things along the way. So, so he wrote the book of Luke and then he wrote the book of Acts. The first was the Gospel of Luke. Uh, the volume described all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up. That was the overarching theme of the book of Luke. And I quote again, all that Jesus began to do and all that Jesus began to teach until the day he was taken up. And then Luke closes his book. 
the second volume, which is the book of Acts of the Apostles. So let me get back to the test. I would have them to take out a piece of paper and a pencil, and I would say pop quiz. I would say number your paper one to eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I would say now list to me the eight parts of speech. I would do that to my sixth graders whom I had, who I never had before. I would do that to my seventh graders who I had the year before and now this year. And I would do it, Pastor, to my eighth graders that I had in sixth grade and seventh grade and now eighth grade. And every time the sixth grade class would hand back their paper blank because they didn't know what I was talking about. The seventh graders would hand their paper back and there might be two or three that they remembered but then they lost track of it and they really didn't know what to do. So I would get seventh graders that would have maybe three or four, maybe five or six. If they were exceptionally well, they would have them all and they would hand their paper in. But by the time I got my eighth graders' paper back, they had all eight of them listed, the eight parts of speech. My favorite part of speech out of all the eight parts of speech are verbs. Anybody ever heard of verb? I promise I'm going somewhere. Anybody ever heard of a verb? Verb, young people, help me out. Verbs are, what? That's right, say it a little louder. Action words. They are words that are actions. They are words that do something. I think that the church of today ought to be verb churches. Amen. We can trash talk all day long. He's higher than any mountain. Amen. I, I, I can get over. Amen. With the Lord, I can get around. With the Lord, I can get under. With the Lord, I can tunnel through. But God's waiting on somebody to stop talking about it. Amen. That's called trash talking. Anybody can trash talk, but just nobody can't get up and do it. God's waiting on a church that's going to get up and do something about it. Oh, the devil's been fighting you. Amen. No, you're not going home and getting in the bed and covering your head and acting like the world's about to end. No, no, it's not going to work. You know what you're going to do? You're going to get up. You're going to look the devil in the eye. You're going to say, I'm a, I'm a servant of the Most High God, and we're going to get through this. Now, the book of Acts means, and it says, should say in your Bible, Acts of the Apostles. This means these are things that the apostles did. Things they acted upon. Now I'm going to challenge you to read through Acts when you can. Because everything you see in the book of Acts should still be an operation of the church of right now. There's some wild stuff goes on in Acts. I'm just telling you right now, there's some, there's some crazy stuff goes on in that book. You're telling me we should be seeing that now? We should be seeing that now. I had a young, young adult group a few years ago. We were called Acts 29. Hey, hold on a minute, Pastor. There's only 28 chapters in the book of Acts. That's, that's exactly right because we're still writing the story. Amen. The book of Acts is not over. We're still writing the story. Everything you see in Acts, you should be seeing in the church of the here and now. So they've been to the upper room. Amen. The book of Acts is the blueprint for the church of 2024. You read Acts, that's the blueprint of how we should be acting today. God didn't call us, brother, to be a dead, dried up, sit on your pew bunch of people. God called us Mission Church of God. We are on a mission and there's work to do outside these four walls. So, the book of Luke taught everything Jesus did and everything Jesus taught until he was taken up. The book of Acts, on the other hand, tells you what happens when the Holy Ghost comes to empower the disciples and gets infused in the church. You didn't hear what I said. The book of Acts tells us what happens when the Holy Ghost gets infused in the church. 
what happens when it becomes a part of your DNA. When the Holy Ghost gets on the inside of you and you're laying hands on the sick and they're recovering. I feel this tonight. Amen. What happens when you call dead things to life? That's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost wasn't given to you to shout in church or to talk in tongues. The Holy Ghost was given so that you could tread over scorpions. The Holy Ghost was given to you so that you could walk through the fire and not be burned. The Holy Ghost was given to you so you could walk through the floods and not be not drowned. What happens when the Holy Ghost infuses the church? Miracles become the norm. The church has become so abnormal that we don't even know how to be normal anymore. So here we have, they just left the upper room. They just spoke with tongues. They just had cloven tongues as a fire sitting upon each of them. I told you this morning that those were the tongues of fire that you're going to go into this world and declare the glorious gospel to every creature you come in contact with. Amen. I don't care where they are, what they're doing. God's given you his spirit so that you can, so he can empower you to be witnesses in this world. So they've just heard the sound out of heaven. Peter, the Pentecostal preacher, just preached a message that these men are not drunk as you suppose being at but the third hour of the day he said but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last day saith God I'm gonna pour my spirit upon all flesh my son and my daughter your son and your daughter our sons and our daughters are gonna prophesy man now what they've said there uh, closing prayer. They have said amen. They put their shoe, their sandals back on and now they've left the prayer meeting. The prayer meeting has been dismissed. Now what? Now what happens? Now what happens? Now that, now that the, the, the Spirit of God has infused the church, it is now a consuming ball of fire. Now what? I'm glad you asked. Amen. Hallelujah. How far did we get? Thank you. We got to verse 5. Sleep 6 up there. And he, so we've got Peter and John. They're probably still, they probably still have stammering lips. They're probably still tingling in their hands. They're probably still feeling a, a jolt of, of something in their souls, they now have rolled up their sleeves and said, it's time to get busy. Amen, I said, it's time to get busy. So, 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 so what have they done now? Peter and John encountered a man who was lame from birth and he was over about 40 years old and he regularly was carried to the gate of the church house. He was regularly brought to the front door of the church. You, you, you don't hear what I'm saying. He was lame, crippled, couldn't walk, and was brought to the church house door every day for nearly 40 years. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now. If I'm in the same condition that I am, that I was in 40 years ago, Something ain't getting the job done at that church. That goes to show I'm going to preach and go home. He can clean up my mess later. I'm teasing. I honor, he is my pastor tonight. I, I'm under his authority. But I will say this. This goes to show that you can hang out at the church for a long time and be unchanged. Just because you hanging out at the church. Just because you pay your. 
Don't get me wrong. I love the way y'all go crazy about your tithing offering. <laughs> a lot of people say you bunch of greedy people. No, I'm like, I went to a place last weekend where they, 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 they were almost throwing the money at the brother. Amen. That goes to show you can come to you can get the Sunday school pen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you got any church of God in your blood whatsoever, you know what I'm talking about. You get the church, you get the Sunday school pen. Amen. Where you've been to Sunday school every every Sunday for the last how many ever years, and you got the pen to show it. You can have the shirt to show it. You can walk around with your shirt that says Missing Church of God, Kwood Church of God, whatever Catholic Church, whatever Baptist Church, whatever Lutheran Church, whatever Pentecost. It don't matter. You can hang out at the church and die. You can hang out at the church and remain in your condition until you get to the place where you're sick and tired of being in the condition you're in. He knew where his help came, but he was waiting for the help to come. Carry me to church. Carry me to the gate called beautiful at the temple. Take me there. The Bible tells us that Peter and John just came downstairs from the upper room encounter. They had just been filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they're getting ready to see what it means to have this Holy Ghost. Amen. They didn't get the Holy Ghost so they could brag about having the Holy Ghost. They, God didn't fill them in the Holy Ghost so they could put a bumper sticker on their car that says, I'm a tongue talker. That ain't, that, that ain't why. That, that ain't why. So, so, so Peter and John, anointed by the power of God, they go to church. They go to church. What, what, what better place to go than to go to church? Little did they know they were heading to a church that was dried up and dead. Prove it. I'm going to stick around a minute. So this lame man at this beautiful gate at the door of the church is sitting there. And he sees Peter and John coming. And he's like, oh, here come two people. Let's see what they can do for me. So he sticks out his cup. He takes his cup. And he holds it up, expecting to receive something from them. I came here today expecting to receive. If you didn't come tonight expecting to receive, why did you come? along with John told the lame man look on us look at me when I'm talking to you is what he's saying we got too many people that's got their eyes on everything else other than what their eyes need to be on Peter said I'm not preaching this sermon to you until you're looking at me I'm not wasting the anointing on somebody that's not listening I'm not preaching Peter was saying, I'm not preaching unless he's listening. He said, look on me. So he looked on him. And then Peter said, silver and gold, what I've got to give you won't fit in your cup. What, I've, what God's got for you is not going to fit in that little cup that you're holding. I'm telling you right now, whatever you need from God, amen, I can tell you how bad you need God based on what kind of cup you bring. Some people bring a thimble because that's all they think that God can give them. Some people bring a coffee cup because they think that's all that God can give them. I'm telling you right now, you give me a swimming pool. 
You, 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 you give me something that, that keeps on flowing and flowing and flowing. Amen. It's like the widow woman, amen, who the creditors came to take her sons for payment. Amen. And the man of God said, you go borrow vessels and not a few. She went had sent her sons to go borrow vessels. They borrowed tall vessels and short vessels. They borrowed skinny vessels and fat vessels. They borrowed clean vessels and dirty vessels. They borrowed every kind of vessel they could get their hands on. They brought those vessels in the house they shut the door and she took that little bit of oil my God in heaven she took that little bit of oil and because that's all she had all I've got's a little bit of oil and the man of God said lady you've got what it takes for God to pour his blessings on your life she started they started pouring and you know when the oil stopped pouring when they ran out of containers to hold it. Now we've preached this. You've heard this. You've taught this in Sunday school. You've put the little people on the felt boards and everything. You, you, you've been there and you've done that. I get it. We've done it in VBS and we've reenacted it. We've done this and we've done that and we've done another. Peter and John, we, we've said, uh, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. We've shouted over it. We've rejoiced over it. We've clapped our hands over it. We might have even turned a flip or two over it. We got real excited about that part, but we stopped there. Don't stop. Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You see, a lot of times we picture Peter saying, In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. my life I'm like bless God he got up and walked praise the Lord he probably danced around jumped around had a good old time he just jumped right up at the name of Jesus he got up but then, then, then one day some, that happens to you sometimes then one day I kept reading and I read where Peter got down in the dirt where the man was living and took him by the hand. Sometimes you got to get dirty. Sometimes you got to bend down and get dirty with the sheep. Sometimes you got to smell like a sheep to win the sheep. Peter was not some big preacher that was standing with his hand, fists on his hips commanding and demanding a bunch of things. He said, oh no, you're going to rise up and walk, but I'm going to get down to where you live and help you. There's where we've got to be, church. We've got to get on the street corner with them and tell them about this man named Jesus. We've got to go where they are. A lot of times, Pastor, they're not going to come just because we open up a church. We've got to show them who we are and what we're about. Amen. So we took him by the hand and lifted him up and immediately, immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. These guys wasn't walking around, sister, talking in tongues and bragging about the Holy Ghost. No, they were getting busy doing the, what the church is supposed to be doing. Peter's like, let me take off my three-piece suit and get down here with you where you live. Let me get my hands dirty. Let me get my robe dirty. Let me smell like alcohol because he smells like alcohol. Let me get down in the slum with them. Take them by the right hand and lift him up. And his ankle bones and his feet receive strength, it gets gooder. I like the way y'all laugh because you get it. There's some places I'm preaching like, yeah, man, amen, I'm gooder. (laughs) 
You see, this man was in this condition for so long. And let me say this. I think there's a lot of people that get comfortable in that condition and don't want to change because it's comfort to them. It's their comfort place. The beautiful gate was a comfortable place for him. That now that he's been healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Preacher, why do I need the Holy Ghost? Because you're going to lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Amen. I've got a picture at home of a church back home, a church of God back home. It had crutches hanging on nails on the walls. It had wheelchairs lined up on the back wall. And on the old upright piano was a mason jar. Everybody know what a mason jar is, right? Inside that mason jar was a cancerous tumor with about 20 tentacles growing out of it. Because you didn't come to that church lame and leave lame. When you came there, those people were going to put hands on you in the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost and you were going to be healed in Jesus' name. And the crutches and the wheelchairs and the cancerous tumor and the mason jar on the upright piano was a testimony of what God still does today. So he leaping, he leaped up. He didn't say, oh, let me get up from here. No, he was so excited that his 40 plus year infirmity had instantaneously left his body. You didn't hear what I said. His 40 year of ailment immediately and instantaneously left his body. He was excited. I like to think he jumped up and started leaping and dancing, saying, I can walk, I can walk, I can walk in Jesus' name. Leaping, standing, and walking. He didn't go home. I'm going to walk in this dead, dried up valley of dry bones. Because for 40 years, these people have been walking by me. Unable to do anything for me. Mission Church of God. Kaywood Church of God, if you're watching. Whoever is a Christian and watching. I never want our churches to be a place where people can come and be comfortable. I'm afraid in the name of comfort we're allowing sin in the camp. If you're a sinner, you need to be squirming. Anybody know what I mean by white knuckled? Anybody? There's you an old term. White knuckled. When I was a sinner and I went to church with my mama and she'd get up and sing Hallelujah Square. Amen. Amen. She'd get up and sing, he can, and I know that he'll stand right by your side till the world comes crumbling in. When she'd get up and sing, stepping on the clouds, we'll see Jesus rise to meet him in the air. When that choir would get up and they'd start singing, oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. They sung it like they were going to meet their blessed Savior in the sky. They sung like angels were sitting on their shoulder under the anointed power of the Holy Ghost. I'd watch drunk men walk up those big long steps into that Kaywood church. They'd go to the back row. Amen. Because they knew if they went any closer to the fire. You know what I'm 
talking about? You get close to the fire, you're going to get burned. They'd sit on that back row. They'd hold on to that old oak pew that had no padding on the, on the bottom or on the back. Amen. They'd sit on that old oak pew. They'd hold on to that thing, digging their fingernails down into it, and their knuckles became white because they were white knuckled. They were holding on to the pew because the Spirit of God was drawing them. Amen. Amen. He said, no, I'm not going home. Boys, I think I'll go to church with you. Amen. Because I got something to say to them people in that room that passed me by every day and put a little bit of money in my cup just to shut me up. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're acting. I'll tell you that right now. Amen. Amen. I, I got something to say to them people that think they've got it all together. They think their theology is just out of this world and they're all dignified and polished and they think they're so good. And, they, and, you, know, and you know, I'm going to tell you something. If we're not careful, church people have a stigma in this world if we're not careful. You can go ask the waitresses at the restaurant on Sunday who the worst crowd of the week is and they'll tell you them Sunday go to meet people. They're the rudest, crudest, most uh, ugly and rude people I've ever met. I'm telling you right now, as a child of God, you, you, don't get the, you don't get the choice to withhold the tip. My food wasn't right. I'm not giving her. You don't get that choice. Number one, you ain't home cooking because you're saying it's the Sabbath and you don't believe in all that, but you go into a restaurant letting somebody else do it for you. Therefore, you tip, if, if the, you know what my rule of thumb is? The worse the service, the better the tip. Because who knows what kind of day that lady's had. You need to walk in with a smile on your face. It don't matter if you carry a Bible under your arm. If you don't live by what that Bible says, it's null and void. You gotta live by that word. You gotta live by what it says. No, I'm going to church. I got something to say. They've walked by me for 40 years and they, they ain't been able to do nothing for me. And he entered with Peter and John into the temple. Somebody tell me. When church is going on and this happens, what's the first thing everybody does? You could be dancing in the spirit and the door open. You're like, we all look at the door, right? I bet they wish they hadn't have looked at the door that day. Because when the lame man got to the door. I don't know who opened it, and I don't care. I don't even know if there was a door. But I know <coughs> that he went, or, went and entered into the church house with them walking, leaping, and praising God. Verse 9. Amen. Let's, let, 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 let's. I feel like he opened the door. Everybody looked. And he was like, Hey! Look here, boys. Look what the Lord is able to do. I've been sitting out there 38 years and you've walked right by me. You've given me money in my cup to shut me up. Look who it is. I'm the lame man at the beautiful gate and the power of God got in my legs and I'm able to leave. Verse 9, go back one, I'm sorry. And all the people, that's us, saw him walking in and praising God. What? Why did Luke feel the need to tell us that he walked in the church house, the place of praise, the house of prayer. 
Why did Luke feel the need to tell us that he walked in praising God? Because apparently, there wasn't a whole lot of praising that went on up in there, up in there. Verse 10. And they knew that it was he that sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They knew it was him that came to church every Sunday for 40 years, but nothing changed. And they were, I'm sorry, go back to 10, I'm sorry. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at that which happened. Unto him. Hold on a minute. Boys, I was raised in the church where when you came at six, you might get out by 10 30. Oh, preacher, there ain't no sense in that. No, no, when the Spirit started moving, I would see three. You see, I was one of these babies. I'm not against children's church. What ages are your children's church? Do you, is there a certain age? K through 12. And I'm not against children's church. I thank God for children's church. I appreciate it. Because I'm sure here they're being taught things. They're not just getting out of your hair. So, so I'm going to give that disclaimer before I go any further. And I'm going to come over here and say the rest. I'm so glad. That as a two and three and four year old, they did not throw me in that musky, mildewy, molded basement. I am so glad that I was in that sanctuary. As a three year old sister, I'll never forget. As a three year old, I would see the glory of God fill the temple. I would see the Shekinah glory fill the room. With my own eyes, my earliest remembrance was two and three years old of where I would see people fall out in the spirit and me under the, under the pew playing with my Hot Wheels. They thought I was out of the way, but I saw and heard it all. When that sister would fall out in the spirit and I'd think she is dead. And she'd get right back up and go again. Young people, I hope you see and you hear everything that goes on in your church. Amen. I, 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 I was brought up in the church. Amen. Where, where, where three and four rows of people would be in the altar praying for the Holy Ghost because they wanted filled in the Holy Ghost and they were not going home until they had lost their English. They, 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 they were staying. They were tarrying. They were waiting until they were baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. So that's why I don't understand why the church people were astonished and amazed when this man come walking in, leaping and rejoicing because of what God had done in his life. They were all filled with wonder and amazement at that which happened, verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed... believe your pastor this morning was healed and when God heals you God heals you right we had a 95 year old charter member of our church who died in 1995 and she would testify about every service how that God healed her of a sore throat at the age of 17 and she died at 95 and never had another one. Because when God does it, I'm not saying he won't face another devil tomorrow, but he ain't going to face that devil again because it's gone. Amen. Amen. He's healed. And he... And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Come here, son. I'll give you two dollars back in a minute. (laughs) 
Peter, and, come here, brother. Would you come here? Stand by him. Or just stand by this side. Peter and John. I'm the lady. And they're holding on. Is that what it said? And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. You know what it says? It's funny. You'll learn a lot if you'll read the Bible. I told a new convert the other day, I said, quit trying to read four chapters and not have a clue what you're reading. Read four verses and understand what you're reading. And guess what? Read it again and read it again and read it again because every time you read it, something new is going to jump out at you. There's a lot in this story, or I want to call it story, that makes it sound fictitious. In this account, there's a lot that happened that I had to stop and slow down a minute. Why, if he's healed, is he having to hold on to Peter and John? I'm going to tell you why. Well, you got a grip. It's like he ain't letting go of me. When really it's me not letting go of him. I'm going to tell you why. He was healed, but he was holding on to what got him to where he's at. Listen to me. A lot of people, and y'all stay right here, okay? A lot of people get healed, and they walk away from what got them to where they needed to be. I don't care how healed you are. Hold on to what got you there. If Mission Church of God helped lead you to where you are, I dare you to leave. I dare you to find somewhere else to go. Amen, I'm telling you right now, you better hold on, baby, to what God led you to and what brought you your divine healing. Some of you wasn't healed physically, but they some of you that was healed spiritually emotionally, behaviorally, financially, relationally, psychologically. Addictions had to let go. Strongholds had to lose you and let you go. I'm telling you, hold on to what got you here. Thank you, boys. A lot of times God gives you, you know, I'm about to close. Where are you at? Come on. I'm going to walk by your shadow because I want a double portion of what you got. His shadow touched me. You heard him play that thing. Somebody said, you going to play and sing? I said, I might sing, but I ain't playing in front of him. Isn't it funny how a good musician will make you sound good? Anyway. So, a lot of times, you know, in the Bible, I've been doing a little bit of studying. I haven't really delved into it yet. But in the Bible, when they anointed you, they poured the oil on your head. And it dripped down your garments. I don't know where through time we've gone from being drenched to a little dabble, do you? But you see, if we're not careful, we'll get all kinds of independent and think that that healing came on our own merit. That healing didn't come on your merit. That healing come because you responded to the word of God. Anybody ever read Ezekiel 37 about the valley of dry bones? You see, we've got a generation that wants the upper room without stopping at Calvary. I love KYC. I love BPYC back home. They have what's called Barberville Pentecostal Youth Camp. I love all the youth camps they have all over the land. I love it. And I truly believe there are some kids that really get a hold of something. But there's a difference in getting a hold of something 
and praying your convictions away. And they're backslid by August because they really didn't get a hold of what they said they got a hold of. And some do. Thank God for them. We can get independent and realize that it was on our own merit that we were healed. No, it was because we responded to the word. I'm sorry, Ezekiel 37, Valley of Dry Bones. As far as the eye could see was an open, deserted valley. And it was had bones scattered all through it. And the Spirit of the Lord picked up Ezekiel and dropped him into the middle of the valley. My great granny used to sing, Oh, you old dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You don't hear that much anymore either. So the Spirit of God drops Ezekiel in the middle of this valley and says, Prophesy to these dry I'm sorry, Son of man, can these bones live? we need to get back to asking hard questions young person middle aged person elder person do you think you can make it without Jesus and a lot of people preach that. but I, my philosophy and you'll hear me say this probably over and over I wasn't there but you weren't either so just because your specula- my speculation may not be right, but yours may not be either. A lot, of preach- a lot of people will preach that Ezekiel said, oh, Lord God, I don't know. No, 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 no. I believe he's like, you know. You know. You know they can. I know they can. But I only know they can because you know they can. On my own merit, these bones can't live. But you know they can when you start saying the words. And if you say the word, I'll say the word you tell me. I do not think Ezekiel was reluctant at all. I think he was chomping at the bit to prophesy to these dry bones. Now that'll that'll, that'll preach. A lot of people won't preach unless people say an amen and shout and turn in circles. How about preaching to a valley of bones that can't say nothing? Listen to me, preacher. You preacher. Listen to me, young man. Listen to me, JC. Listen to me, all you young people that God may call into the ministry. There may be times in your ministry that you're preaching to what you feel like is a valley of dry bones. I'm telling you right now, keep preaching. Because eventually them bones are going to live. And I want you to tell God they can't live with me. But they can. You know they can. You know they can. And if you know they can, then I know they can. And if, you, if I will speak the words you give me, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but in time these bones are going to live because you said they would. a generation that wants the Spirit. They want the Holy Ghost without the Calvary. They want the Spirit without the crucifixion. You gotta die to some things. So what happened? Prophesy to these to these bones. And say to these bones, Oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And the Bible says the earth shook because that's what it does when God's word speaks. And bone came to his bone and this bone to that bone and that bone to that bone. And there stood before them an exceeding great army. Hold on, he wasn't done yet. What did he tell him to do the second time? Prophesy to the wind. What is the wind representative of? The Spirit. So I said all of that to say this. You don't get the Spirit until you respond to the Word. you got to hear and respond. Not hear and walk away. Not hear and let it fall on deaf ears. you got to hear and respond to the Word before you ever get the wind. You want the wind? I felt that pour over the top of my head right then. You want the wind? Respond to the word. 
You know why this man was healed? He responded to the word. Oh, in the Pentecostal church, we've neglected the word and tried to get straight to the wind. No, we got to have the word. And as the lame man which was held healed, held Peter and John. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wandering. Verse 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered to the people. Here's Peter. He's, he's taking his liberty to preach again. Peter's preaching everywhere he goes because he knows it's the preaching of the word that brings life to the body. Would you stand? men of Israel, members of this church why marvel ye at this he didn't pat them on the back and tell them how great they was he didn't pet around on them and make them think they was all that in a bag of chips first of all a bag of chips is a third chips, two thirds hot air so you might be all that in a bag of chips He wasn't petting on them, telling them how pretty. Lord, honey, you're so pretty. You're so great. You're so wonderful. He said, no, why are you marveling? Why, where did you go wrong? Why do you look earnestly on us as though by our own power and holiness we made this man walk? 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Verse 14. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. 15. Let's keep going. And killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. We saw him raised from the dead, and we are witnesses. Hold on, hold on, we're, we're what? What? You gotta say it with me, we're what? Witnesses. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. So that you can be a witness. Any of you young people in school, young people in school? Anybody in here in school? High school, elementary school, middle school? Anybody? Come here. I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass you. And if you don't want to come, don't come. I'm, you know what? If you don't, don't. That's okay. That's okay. You don't have to come. You don't have to come. I can't guarantee you that you're going to get what God's got for you if you don't. But you don't have to come. some witnesses we got some witnesses in the house you see they've been to church tonight I hope you got my good side I don't have one we got witnesses in the house they going to school tomorrow elementary middle high going to school tomorrow. You know what I pray? I pray something in here gets a hold of something in there that when they walk into their schoolhouses tomorrow that something leaps off of them and gets on to something. I believe in the tangibility of the anointing. I believe in the transfer of anointing. I don't pray.
pray over prayer cloths for my health. Somebody says there's no power in the cloth, then stop praying over it. Because I believe the anointing that is in you transfers out of you into that piece of cloth. I'm believing that Holy Ghost fire. I'm praying Holy Ghost fire. Get deep down inside of them. Amen. Can I, Pastor, is this okay? Can I have you to come and join me? Come closer, young people, come closer. Come closer, we don't bite. Come on, baby, come on. Come on, those of you that did your expressive worship tonight, God bless you, you bless my heart. Amen. The young lady who prayed over the tithing offering that y'all went and shouted over. See if it works for me. Tithe and offering. I hope you're watching from Kaywood. Tithe and offering. Anyway. Tithe and offering. Okay. I, I, I'm finished. I'm finished. I want you to come. I want you to, we need to pray. I call it the three S's, safety, security, and success. All, uh, nine schools in the Harlan County School District, their high school, one, and eight elementary middle schools, I pray every morning for the success, the safety, and the security because there are devils out there that wants this generation you can read in the Old Testament. It says there rose a generation that knew not God nor the things he did in Israel. That's scary. But I think there is raising a generation that's going to carry this bloodstained manner. That's going to carry this life of holy living. That's going to be filled in the Holy Ghost and fire. A man that's going to preach this. I believe there's preachers in this line. I believe there's prophets and prophetesses in this line. And I declare today, devil, you can't have any of them. Would you join me? Would you join me? Come on. I want us to make a circle around these young people. Come on. I'm going to stand right here because I want to personally lay hands on all of them. I want us to encamp them. Circle around them. Leave me just a little bit of room as I come through. I'm going to start here on the end. And I just want you to start praying for these kids. Would you do that right now? After I put my hand on them, I want you to step up and I want you to put yours on them. Father, in Jesus' name. My Lord, I pray that Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost power, I rebuke every lie of every devil in hell that comes against them. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> hey, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
are healed, the soul is filled, the battle has been won. On your promise I stand, and in faith I believe it, that what I pray in your name is already
This is what John talked about earlier about staying in the altars and just lingering. Guys, this is how I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost right here. Staying in the altar. Staying in it. When everybody left, I stayed in it. Amen. When all the tongue talkers left, I stayed in it. Amen. And that's when the Spirit filled me up. You've got to be hungry. Hungry, hungry. And some people might say, Pastor, I'm, I am hungry. Well, when you're up here seeking the baptism, when you got those hands raised, open up your mouth and let the praise come out. And when you allow the praise to come out, then something can go in. Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to pray, and I'm not going to pray a dismissal because I want them to stay. I want them to linger. But I'll say a prayer, and if you have to go, you're feel free to do that. But if you're going to stick around in this room, please be reverent to what's going on up here. There are needs that are standing in this altar, people that are needing miracles. Um, they're still praying for a miracle for Josh and Amanda's dad, so... Please be having faith and hope with them on that. Amen. Brian and Bonnie, they're facing something monstrous, something big. But I've seen my God do big things repeatedly. Amen. And I, my prayer wasn't, Lord, just fix it. I just said, Lord, do something amazing. I mean, something that just blows your mind. Kind of like what happened to me this morning at about 9.48 in the Florence St. Elizabeth emergency room. Amen. Do you still believe in healing? I experienced one today. Amen. That's how God works. God knew I wanted to be here. I didn't want to be home. I didn't want to be in the emergency room. And he decided to heal me today. Amen. I'm very thankful for that. There's a beautiful couple standing in the back there today. I think God has done some pretty miraculous things for them. Raise your hands. Amen. Let's see them. Amen. There's a beautiful young man that was up here at the altar. I don't see him. Where'd he go? Did he run off? God is doing some pretty amazing things for him. And when Brother John brought up all the kids, all the teenagers, my hands went up. <sighs> That's just awesome. Amen. I have that many young people, teenagers in church, and not just teenagers, but babies too. Amen. And I know there were some preachers standing up here, and I know they're going to be preaching the gospel. Amen. And I know they're going to be put in the churches by district overseers that are in desperate need for pastors to do that. So get ready. Amen. And I felt good about myself today because he's a principal at a school, and I'm a nobody. And he preaches just like I preach. Amen. He's preaching about the Holy Ghost being more than just speaking in tongues and running aisles. He believes like I do. We need to get busy laying hands on people and healing them and seeing them saved and cast out demons and all that stuff. That's our job. That white knuckled stuff. I used to sit in church listening to every preacher preach to me and nobody else. Has anybody ever felt that before? The preachers, no matter who they are, they're preaching to you. That's conviction. That's God. He's after you. Amen. He doesn't want to be mean to you. He wants to save you. He wants you to be more than just a pew warmer. And he doesn't want you to get the Sunday school pen. He wants you to, to get enough of the word down inside of you, enough of the spirit down inside of you, that you realize there's more to it than just constantly sitting in Sunday school class. We need some teachers. We need preachers. We need evangelists. We need prophets. We need all that stuff desperately. Father, we thank you for everything. Thank you for today. Thank you for the word today, God. Thank you for the many blessings. Thank you for those that are still on the altar here right now, God, seeking your face. God, you know all the needs, God, that are in this room, and we believe in you and we trust in you, great God. Move mightily, God, upon these people, God. Bring us back each and every night. Don't, don't let us put anything in front of you, God, and being in your house this week, God. Bless us. Give us strength, God. Change us. Mature us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, if you're staying in here, be reverent. Service starts at 7 the rest of the week. Amen.